I'm Nicola Bevan, and uh, as the, Anita had already commented with the title of the webinar. Um, so in today's webinar, we're going to cover how real-time live cell analysis of antibody internalization can provide additional biological insight and enhance productivity. Um, with the use of the Incusite Fabflor pH reagent to provide a turnkey approach to antibody labeling, and then we will share some examples of how this assay can be used for characterization of early stage test antibodies in a biologics discovery paradigm. So why are we interested in studying antibody internalization? In the year of 2016, the global sales for therape therapeutic antibodies was in excess of $90 billion. And these therapeutic antibodies have been used across a range of disease areas, including anti-cancer, anti-inflammatory, and antiviral agents. Now, the extent and the rate of the internalization into cells governs the efficacy and the safety and the pharmacodynamic profile of these reagents. And this is through both specific target-mediated or non-specific um, mechanisms like penocytosis. And as with any small drug molecule, small modifications to the antibody can affect the duration of action. And obviously, some of these important therapeutic agents are antibody drug conjugates, where we're looking at the delivery of a drug payload to cells. So in, there are currently many um, assays to look at antibody internalization. And uh, current methods for quantification of internalization are current, currently limited. And they're mainly microscopy or flow cytometry based. They're often time consuming and not amenable to testing large numbers of samples. And there's a requirement for a large quantity of the antibody to allow the direct fluorescent labeling. And it's often restricted to endpoint assays with multiple experiments required for a temporal profile. And because of this, these assays are often limited to later key stage antibodies. So why are we interested in using live cell analysis? Um, so live cell analysis systems should uh, combine all of these features on the slide here. So an automated real-time analysis to allow a full kinetic profile, be image-based to allow you to look at cell interactions and morphologies, but also flexible enough to fit into existing workflows with the use of multiple different optics, readouts, and the ability to look at various different cells and vessels, and often allowing the multiplexing with different assay readouts. For the uh, instance of the incusite, it sits within the incubator, so there's a full environmental control there to allow your cells to be happy in their normal environment. And most importantly for the reagents, they need to be non-perturbing over these longer-term studies and be validated for use in live cell protocols. So if we look at the application principle in the diagram here, what we're introducing is the Incusite Fabflor reagent, which is actually a fragment of antibody or a fab, which has been pre-conjugated to a pH-sensitive probe. This then binds to the FC region of a test antibody and labels the antibody with the probe. We can then add the label test antibody to our cells of interest, and on interaction with the target, the antibody and the target will be internalized into the cell. And once it enters the endosomal and lysosomal pathway, you can see that the lysosomes get increasingly acidic in nature. And it's this change in pH which causes the, the change in fluorescence to cause the, red flu, the, the probe to fluoresce. And if we look at the characteristics of the, the pH characteristics of the probe, we can see that at, lower, at higher pHs of pH 7, there's a very low level of fluorescence that's seen and that rapidly increases as the pH of the um, environment becomes more acidic. And this gives us a nice rapid readout with our, with our dye of interest. So if we now look to see what this looks like on the incusite, here we can see a movie in BT474 cells, which are a breast cancer cell line, and these are HER2 positive. And they have been treated with a septin, which is conjugated to the fab floor um, reagent, and you can see, even after six hours, there's a very bright red signal within our cells. And if we look at the red-only image, we can see this is very cytoplasmic in nature and very punctate, which you would expect if it was entering the lysosomal pathway. If we now look at the workflow that's involved, you can see it's a very simple workflow to, to use this application. 
The first step is to seed your cells into a plate and allow those to adhere to the plastic. In another vessel, and this can be a 96-well plate, we then mix the test antibody in combination with the fabfluory agent. And this is in a 1 to 3 molar ratio, so of test antibody to fabfluor. And this can be performed in complete media, so in the presence of serum. The reaction takes about 15 minutes, and then once the antibody has been labelled, this can be added to your cell plate. And then that is immediately placed in the incusite where we can begin to collect images of our internalization signal. Now, by keeping the reagents and the plate and all the liquids at 37 degrees, we can ensure that we can capture a very early signal without, with, by lowering the risk of condensation in our plate. And in some cells, this response is very rapid. So I think you can agree that the, uh, the layout here enables a very fast and simple labeling method for test antibodies. There is no wash that's required to remove the excess fab floor reagent, and it's suitable for small quantities of antibodies and large numbers of antibodies. And in combination with the, uh, the in, um, Incusite software and Incusite analysis system, this gives us a fully integrated solution for the application. If we now look in more detail at what is happening within our cells, in these images here, these are HD1080 cells that have been treated with CD71, which is an antibody to the transferrin receptor, and this has been labeled with the fabfluory agent. And after six hours, the image on the left-hand side, you can see there's a very clear red fluorescent signal within the cytoplasm of these cells. The image on the right-hand side is of an IgG isotype control that has been labeled in a similar manner, and you can see there is no red fluorescence present. And if we now do a quantification of those images, you can see there's a very fast, rapid increase in the red object area in the well, uh, which is not seen in the isotype or the media control wells. Um, and this shows it's a very specific cytoplasmic localization, and it's specific for the target antibody. And we can also see there's a nice, rapid, time-dependent increase in the signal. Now, from the image, you can see that obviously the number of cells is very dependent on the red area that we can see within the well. So we went on to validate that, um, the sig how the signal size was dependent on cell number. So in this scenario here, we've put an increasing number of HD1080s in our well. We've then treated them again with our CD71 that's labeled to fab fluor. And as you can see with the graph in the middle here, as the number of cells is increased in the well, there is a large increase in the red object area within the well, and this is in line with the number of cells that have been added. If we now use the red object area and actually normalize this for the phase area as a surrogate for the uh, density of cells in the well, we end up with the data on the right-hand side here, which shows that although the signal size is dependent on cell number, the actual rate of internalization of the antibody in producing the signal is cell number independent. Um, and, and this is quite a nice example from this data to show uh, that there is a signal size number is dependent, but actually the rate is independent. We also want to go on to show that the response that we're looking at is a specific response. So in this scenario here, we've taken JERCATs, which are a T-cell-like cell line, and RAGIs, which are a B-cell-like cell line, and tested them with a range of CD surface marker antibodies that have been labelled with the fabfluor reagent. And in both instances here, you can see both cell lines gave a nice response to CD71, which is a very ubiquitously expressed um, receptor. I mean, that's the green line here. And then you can see that both cell lines also give us a nice response to CD45, which is a general lymphocyte marker. But only the T cells will give us a response to the CD3, and only the B cells give us a nice clear response with the CD20 marker. And we can, uh, we can then produce a nice expression profile for these, uh, for these cell lines. Now you'll also note that those particular cell lines, um, although they have, the, uh, have a response to CD71, the RAGIs appear to give a faster and a larger uh, response than the JERCATs. And we feel that this may be dependent on the level of receptor expression or the ability of those cell lines to actually internalize the marker. 
But the data set here gives us the expected CD surface marker expression profile and also demonstrates that the signal we see here, although specific, it does give us a generic utility um, for labeling multiple antibodies. And the last piece of validation data here is showing that the, the antibody internalization signal we see is actually within the lysosome compartment of the cell. So in the setup here, we have got HD1080 cells again that have been treated with CD71. And the top image on the right-hand side here shows the nice red antibody internalization signal. We've then added lysosensor, which is a lysosomal marker, which gives us a green signal. And this is shown in the bottom left-hand corner. Then, using the Incusite software, we can look at the coincidence of the two um, red of the two coincident of the two marker um, within the cell. And this is shown in that yellow um, marking there. And if we look at the quantification of the images, we can see that about 74% of the red area in these cells is co-localized with the green area. So it supports that the presence of the internalized fab fluor reagent is within the lysosomal compartments. We're now going to change track a little bit and consider how a therapeutic antibody is actually selected and optimized within a drug discovery setting. So in most instances, the first stage is to raise your antibody. Um, and this is normally done as multiple hybridomas. And here we're normally looking in the range of 1,000 antibodies, normally producing low quantities and within a mouse, a rabbit, or a rat. And the first step then is to check for binding or engagement of the antibody with the target. And this is obviously often done with uh, binding, and we're looking at binding characteristics normally of around 500 to 1,000 antibodies. The next step is to uh, test these for functional affinity ranking, and this is where the first early cellular testing is normally carried out. And this is probably the first stage in this pathway where the uh, real-time antibody internalization assay could offer um, a, be enabling. So uh, at this stage, we would be looking at single concentration screening of probably hundreds of antibodies. And because we can label those in a serum-containing media, we can use the non-purified hybridoma samples to allow direct comparison of these samples. The next stage is often to take those antibodies of interest, scale them up, and then do further functional evaluation on them. And again, the um, application we're talking about here would allow you to look at full concentration range profiling of those uh, reagents and possibly to do a rate comparison of them. The next stage is often to take those uh, key antibodies of interest and then humanize them, ready for a therapeutic application. And again, the Incusite can offer um, the full concentration range profiling, mechanistic studies, and also do the possibility to multiplex with the traditional readouts, be that cell health or other readouts. So what does this actually look like? So to actually show this, um, we uh, purchased in a range of commercially available CD71 antibodies and tested those in a head-to-head -head screening scenario. And what we're looking at here on the left-hand side are the plate views taken from the Incusite software. And this shows that these antibodies tested in triplicate as a full concentration response curve. You can see the full temporal response of, um, for those antibodies. And we can clearly see that antibody 1A was a little bit more potent than antibody 2, which was more potent than antibody 3. And then we have controls in column 10, 11, and 12 with a nice, clear, positive response in column 11. Um, Reassuringly, antibody 1A and 1B were the same clone but purchased from alternative suppliers, and these gave very similar responses. The image in the middle here is a deep view which can be taken from the Incusite S3 software, and this is shown for a single time point. And what you can see here is the red fluorescent signal in the plate. And you can clearly see there's a clear positive response in column 11, and you can see an increasing effect with our compounds as we go up the plate, showing the nice response that we're looking at. So this is showing you that the label, labeling protocol is suitable for multiple test antibodies, 
and it will enable that direct head-to-head -head screening. It's 96 well plate compatible for both the labelling and obviously the cell readout. It's suitable for samples that contain serum, so suitable for those early hybridoma samples, and it's suitable for small quantities of sample. And the plate view within the Incusite software allows a very clear, quick visualisation of the response. But obviously we can do a full characterisation of the response here, and this is the quantificated data from those plates. So in the bar graph here, I'm actually showing only the data from the 12-hour time point. And you can, the first couple of bars on the graph here are the positive and negative control wells. And you can see there's a clear positive response. And if you calculate the Z prime values for this data, we're looking at Z primes of 0.75 and 0.87, which is indicative of a very high quality assay. We can now see the full concentration response curves for the various antibodies that we tested. And in this particular setting, antibody 1A and 1B look very similar. Antibody 2 is a little bit less potent. And antibody 3, 4, and 5 are only giving us responses at the highest concentrations. So as I said before, the data here is only displayed as a single time point. But the full temporal response was also collected, along with the phase confluency, of which we can then use to assess if there are any effects of the test articles on cell health or proliferation. And the assay position and the workflow would enable the comparison of hundreds of antibodies. But if you required further throughput with Z primes of this quality, it would be amenable to be miniaturized into a 3-8-4 well format. So the next stage would be to look at your um, antibodies of interest in further detail. So the data shown here is uh, looking at a HER2 response again. And again, we're in our BT474 cells. And again, we're looking at Herceptin that's been labeled with the Fabfluor reagent. So the graph on the left-hand side shows increasing concentrations of Herceptin on our cells. And we can see a nice clear increase in that internalization response over the 48-hour time point. If we now take the area under the curve and do an analysis, we can then plot a full concentration response curve, which allows us to calculate the midpoint or the EC50 for this data. And with anything within Incusite, this is fully backed up with the images. So if we look at the images on the right-hand side here, we can see a nice clear red signal within our BT474 cells and a very, very weak, non-specific IgG isotype control response. So we can see there's a very rapid concentration-dependent increase in our specific signal over time. The next set of data is um, with an alternative cell line, and in this case we're looking in Raji cells, so a non-adherent cell type. And this time we're looking at an anti-CD20 antibody, Rituxan, which again has been labeled with our Fabfluor reagent. And just with the Herceptin data, you can see a nice concentrated related response with this uh, reagent on our cells. And again, we can assess the midpoint or the EC50 value for this data. And the images clearly show a nice specific red signal for the rituxan on these cells. So in conclusion, I, I hope you feel that the data that we've presented today shows that the Incusite Fabfluor Red reagent is suitable for a quick and easy generic labeling of test antibodies. It can be used with non-purified antibodies in serum-containing media, and there's a very low background signal due to the use of the pH-sensitive probe. It's a fully integrated assay solution with simple workflow and automated analysis. It's image-based with real-time assay providing a full kinetic profile and morphological insight and it enables the comparison of test antibodies early in that discovery pathway. It also has the ability to be multiplexed with additional readouts if required. So real-time live cell analysis coupled with the Incusite Fabfluor Red uh, reagent enables direct cell-based antibody internalization measurements to provide additional biological insight and enhanced productivity for the evaluation of therapeutic antibodies. So thank you very much for your time. If you uh, require any further information, please visit the website. There's a full application note on there, and there's um, more information. And the table at the bottom here just shows the particular reagents that are available for this application.